Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Dr. Cordova, thank you for uh, being here, Dr. Arviso. Um, quick question for you, Dr. Cordova, in the, your budget request for NSF uh, request $512 million for clean energy research and development. And my understanding is that's about a 38% increase. And I guess two questions would be, are you uh, encouraging collaboration between the appropriate offices within the NSF and the DOE? And uh, how do you make sure that there's no duplication of funding uh, with uh, Department of Energy Office of Science when it comes to these kinds of projects? Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for your question. In fact, I'll be with them this evening with the Department of Energy. We work very closely with the Department of Energy. And my colleague here, Dr. Arvisu, uh, until very recently headed one of the DOE laboratories, and this is his okay. specialty, is on clean energy. Um, uh, we're, we're very pleased to be working as uh, in an interagency sense on this very important initiative. Where NSF comes in is on the very basic research on materials, uh, for example, for rechargeable batteries, on floating wind turbines would be another example, on solar fuels, economical generation of hydrogen from water rather than methane, and on uh, the new uh, combination of organic and inorganic materials and what progress we can make with those. But uh, if you'll uh, allow Dr. Arviso to comment, because this is his field. Uh, yes, thank you, Dr. Cordova. And, and I think, uh, as, as Dr. Cordova has already suggested, uh, the, there's close coupling with the Department of Energy, Office of Science, and even the applied offices. Uh, the kind of the good news and bad news about energy research is it's target rich. There's, there's a lot of things that can be done. And, and where I think uh, the admission agencies, the Department of Energy, is very much focused on applications and how you take those essentially to the marketplace more quickly, there is plenty of room for revolutionary work uh, that goes on uh, at, the fundamental, uh, at, at the fundamental level. Uh, Office of Science is focused on high energy physics, uh, basic energy uh, research which relates to biology. Um, the opportunity to do some really revolutionary high risk, high reward sorts of outcomes uh, really uh, are not funded uh, so much in the Department of Energy, and I think it's left to um, uh, our tremendous uh, capabilities within the university community, within other research labs, uh, to actually offer ways in which we can really change the, the trajectory and move the needle on new th um, revolutionary um, outcomes that I think you could not do within the national uh, programs of, uh, of the Department of Energy. And if I could ask you both also, how is the private sector involved in that? Can the private sector apply for grants uh, in this area? What would you like to start? I'm so we do we do work in parallel with the private sector. We we certainly well one thing we fund is SBIR grants, okay, and and a number of the, those small business innovative research grants, and so some of those are focused in this area. We, um, we in partnership with private, we fund. Um, uh, energy, um, uh, I'm sorry, engineering research centers, ERCs. We have quite a number of those. Uh, and and uh, a few of those are specifically uh, looking at clean energy, either materials or applications of, uh, of some kind. And there, they, there will be partners from the private sector that are also funding that. It's one of the requirements of those engineering research centers that they have uh, industry partnerships. Yes, and, and I think, you know, it, there's a wide spectrum of work that goes on uh, that relates to energy and, and, and all kinds of uh, forms of energy. And what, you, what we find is that the private sector primarily likes to work very close to the application and development side. So uh, in that respect, uh, that's really more of the purview of the Department of Energy, where they have many multiple partnerships requiring 50-50 cost share in most, in most cases. If it's more fundamental work even for them, uh, they require less cost share from the private sector. Uh, rarely does the private sector work in some of these areas, I think, that the National Science Foundation works in, although it, they do, in fact, uh, have great uh, opportunity and application, to, again, depending on the, 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 the nature of the technology, if, it, if it's software, if it's architectures, that they're more likely to do, uh, but things that require uh, larger uh, commitments for longer term, higher risk, uh, you find that the research labs in, in the private sector don't ne nearly uh, address that part of the spectrum nearly as well as the Science Foundation does. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair.